maybe just my speakers. Is it better now? I just turned up the. Yes. Okay, perfect. Tonight, <coughs> also see me. <laughs> Okay, so maybe we can start if everybody's ready. Um, so hopefully you can hear me now because I, I got kicked out again, but now I should be back and everything should be working fine. Only thing is, as I said, I'm not Sarah, even though the the, the name on 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 the on the screen says it. <coughs> so first of all. Um, Thanks everybody for joining this webinar. The, the, the webinar is titled uh, Open Science Training Approaches, uh, Building Communities, Online Courses and Tra Training for Trainers. Uh, my name is Christopher Schwarzkopf. I'm working as a project manager for Wikimedia Deutschland. And um, so this webinar is hosted by, by us, Wikimedia Deutschland, and the State and University Library in Göttingen as part of the Open Science Fellows program. Um, it will be, it's actually the first of several webinars that we have within the program, um, all of which focus on different aspects and principles of open science. Um, and the next one will be um, on uh, December the 12th uh, about uh, academic search engine optimization. So if you're interested in this, um, you can follow us um, on, on Twitter or we will also send the link to everybody who's participating today. Um, just to give a very brief overview, um, the Open Science Fellow, Fellows pro Program aims to support young researchers in the early career stages um, who want to practice open science and are willing to learn from experts in open science. Um, and also we want to address academic institutions to spread the idea of open science uh, on an institutional level in order to strengthen the free knowledge movement. Um, if you want to find out more about the uh, Open Science Fellows Program, you can uh, click on the website. I just posted the, the link in the, in the chat. And there you can, it's a German page, but you can also find a link to the English version. Um, so we are very thankful that the State and University Library getting uh, participates in the, in the program as a scientific partner and will give uh, some valuable insights on open science approaches and training methods today. Um, before we start, just a few important things. Um, so all the participants are muted um, all the time, so please use the chat. So I'm sure everybody uh, has already found the chat 
If not, it's on the left side of the screen at the bottom. Um, if you have questions, because um, there will be room for questions later, you can just write them into the chat and Sarah and me will be uh, monitoring the chat and then read them um, so we make sure they won't get lost. And um, the overall duration of the webinar will be approximately 90 minutes. And also this uh, webinar is being recorded and the recording will be made available afterwards in our um, YouTube channel. So now I would like to introduce our speakers that we have with us today. So um, it's uh, Helene uh, Brinken and Dr. Edith uh, Gerwig. Um, Helene works at the state, well actually both work at the um, state and university library in Göttingen and Helene is a project officer for Open Science, for the Open Science uh, Project FOSTER and Fit for RRI. Uh, hopefully, I pronounced it correctly. Um, she is responsible for outreach and dissemination, creating training materials and workshops. Um, and for example, she facilitated the um, Open Science Handbook book sprint uh, in Hanover in February this year. Um, also, um, Edit is working uh, at the at the State University Library. And uh, she's a project officer for the U EU project Open Up, and her research area mainly centers around alternative peer review and dissemination practices. She's also involved in open science advocacy activities such as trainings, uh, organizing workshops, and so on. Um, the presentation now will take about 30 to 40 minutes, and then we will have more or less about 50 minutes uh, for discussion and questions. So yes, I think that's it from from me and I would like to hand over to Helena first if I'm informed correctly. And um, yes, hopefully everybody's going to enjoy the webinar. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Chris. Just to double check that you can hear me well. So um, also welcome from my side. Um, I would like to start the webinar um, with a definition of open science before we go more into detail um, about the open science training approaches and the uh, online courses that we offer in our project. So um, open science is the practice of science in such a way that others can collaborate and contribute because the research data and other research processes are freely available and the terms enable reuse, distribution and reproduction of the research and also of the underlying data and methods. So in short that means that um, it's the movement to make scientific research data and dissemination accessible to all levels of an inquiring society. So um, here we have a simple um, research life cycle so, um, um, where you formulate your hypothesis, um, you design your study and think about like uh, the experiments, interviews or observations. Um, uh, when you analyze your data you uh, consider if you um, will have text, images or records. Uh, sound records, um, then you analyze your data like qualitative or quantitative and the final step is to uh, disseminate or report the study. So um, I would like to go into more detail what um, it really means to practice open science. So for example at the stage of the idea you can open up your proposal, you can share it and you can involve the public, um, for example, by using uh, social media, wiki, blogs, uh, academic social networks. At the stage of the method, you can use open science tools, for example, um, open lab notebooks, uh, you can pre-register your study, you um, can share your experimental process of trial and error. And when you collect your data, in order to do it in an open way, you should um, start searching for the for existing data before generating your own and then of course you should manage and share your research data in the most open format. Um, for example you can do that by using versioning control, storage management and very important metadata and of course you sh should consider um, that you um, use easy 
easily attainable software um, to allow anyone to reproduce your results. Then the next step is the analysis. And here, um, you should document your research routines freely accessible. You um, should cite open access versions of literature. And you should, of course, provide data and code citations. Acknowledge the contributor roles uh, in, the, in your publication. And make all conflicts of interest, uh, interest transparent. And uh, at the stage of open access and open dissemination and open outreach, you should also publish your research um, freely accessible. For example, you can publish your preprints. You uh, can encourage feedback um, and uh, encourage also open peer review. You can use social media and public debate for that. And like tools would be uh, open access journals, open access repositories, also for sharing posters and presentations. And you can also consider to translate your research into world languages. Um, so all these open science practices um, help to maximize use and reuse, uh, as well as collaboration and impact of your research. And here we have some fundamental rules of open science, which are transparency, um, accessibility, uh, reusability, and that's available and free. And uh, some basic tools to make this possible are um, digital object identifiers, uh, rich metadata, and long-term archiving e-infrastructure. Um, so you might wonder why open science. So, well, a very good reason is that um, according to this um, study, 50% uh, of all research data and experiments is considered not reproducible. And the vast majority um, of data never makes it to a trusted and sustainable repository. So um, it's not only like that there's a huge problem of reproducibility, but also there are many benefits of open science. So if you uh, practice open science, you can increase the efficiency of research, for example, because you avoid duplication effort and you um, reduce uh, the costs for data collection. Um, then you promote quality of research and scholarly rigor. So um, for example, if you provide your data um, in peer review, um, open science also enhances the visibility and the scope for engagement across the research community. And uh, it offers new possibilities for citizen science and public engagement. Also, um, it can enable researchers to ask and address new questions, because you can like aggregate and reanalyze data from a wide range of sources, because the data is available. Um, also, open science induces collaboration and community building. So you can share knowledge and expertise across the whole community, and not only across institutions, but also uh, across national and disciplinary boundaries. Um, another important aspect of open science is really inclusivity and participation and application of research. So it gives um, yeah, a lot of opportunities for society and also in terms of fairness um, for people who can access research. Um, well, then it increases the economic and social impact of research. And if you're still not convinced uh, why to um, care about open science, um, you often need it to comply to funders requirements. For example, of the European Commission, which has an open access policy and open research data pilot. Um, so after this introduction uh, to open science and what it means uh, to put it into practice, I would like to present the FOSTER project uh, for you, for which I'm a project officer since uh, May last year. And actually, it's uh, the second phase of the project. So um, it started in 2017. And the first uh, phase of the project was from 2014 to 2016. Um, so this project aims to achieve and support the cultural change toward open science. And we want to raise awareness about open science and really to foster the practical implementation. Um, 
And what we do to, um, to achieve this practical, practical implementation is to offer training for researchers. So we have um, traditional offline training, such as uh, yeah, workshops, face-to-face -face workshops, and uh, we have online training. So um, the web portal fosteropenscience.eu um, is yeah, our website where you can um, access many open science resources. So um, what we do on the portal is um, yeah, we collect resources with open licenses for other people to reuse. And um, this taxonomy um, was created by my colleagues in the first project phase to define open science. And we also use it to categorize all the um, reusable materials on our platform. So for example, if you look for something about open access, um, definition, you can just click on the, um, on the taxonomy and find the resources. Um, apart from that, um, we also have like an events calendar for open science training events and we have a trainers directory for people who are looking for a speaker that um, yeah, could, for example, speak in a workshop. And we just recently um, launched uh, new courses, um, which are available under the link fosteropenscience.eu slash toolkit, so um, a whole open science toolkit. And um, here you can see the topics we cover, so what is open science, uh, best practice in open research, open access publishing, peer review, sharing preprints, and so on. And um, these courses are really um, want to answer your, your questions and help you to put open science into practice. For example, in the open access publishing course, you can learn how to avoid predatory journals or um, how to find the, uh, an open access journal. Um, so what we did when we developed them, we really thought about what would be the burning questions of researchers. And we worked uh, together with our disciplinary partners. So for example, the Center for Genomic Regulation in Spain and Gieses uh, from Germany for the social sciences and Daria for the humanities and um, the CRG is for the life sciences so that we have um, discipline specific examples uh, whenever relevant. And we um, have, um, the courses are interactive, so after each course there is a quiz and uh, you can um, obtain a badge if you completed the course. Um, apart from these uh, standalone courses, we also um, developed some learning pathways. So there are five different pathways uh, we suggest um, to go through the courses. So for example, you can see them on the slide, the open peer reviewer, um, the reproducible research practitioner, and the open access also. And all of these uh, pathways, they um, take like three to five hours and uh, it um, consists of these standalone courses. It's just a combination of those. Um, and after you've completed them, you can also um, get a badge for that, a certificate. Um, so here's just an example of um, yeah, the learning pathways. For example, uh, when you want to become an open access author, um, you can do the course, what is open science? Um, open access publishing, managing and sharing research data, open licenses, sharing preprints, and open peer review. And like, yeah, similar um, are the other courses. And uh, you can access all the courses without registering on our portal. But if you would like to obtain a badge or like, like this certificate, um, uh, it, it's good if you have an account because then we can track your progress. Mm, so here's one example. So you can see this is the open peer reviewer uh, profile. And uh, you can see, that, for example, that I have done the open peer review course. I have completed that. But to get the open peer reviewer um, badge, I need to do managing and sharing research data as well as open source software and workflows. 
And here's just some screenshot how these courses look like. So for example, this open peer review course. Um, so there's a short introduction and then there are um, short videos and um, really images and short text to click through and um, that give you practical advice and also link to other resources because of course we build on other resources and we didn't want to, to reinvent the wheel. So, um, and at the end, as you can see here, he, see here um, there is always a quiz. Um, apart from from these online courses, um, Foster focus on, focuses on training the trainers, so the open science trainers, to uh, achieve a multiplier effect and really um, have a sustainable approach of open science training. So uh, what we did and what we still do is that we conduct a, a trainers boot camp. So in April um, this year we had a boot camp in Barcelona and uh, last month in Riga. So there we invite uh, people who work in the field of open science or as, um, students or early career researchers and really would like to educate the, their peers about open science. So what we try to do is to really build a community of trainers that uh, can support each other. And we provide the infrastructure for that. For example, as I showed before to you, we have this trainers directory. So new science trainers can promote their profile there. And we have this uh, events calendar for people to promote their events. And they can use our platform to um, to upload their resources, their training resources, but also to download and reuse um, resources of others. Um, and yeah, one very important thing that we did this year, as Chris already mentioned, we um, created the Open Science Training Handbook. So this is one of the resources that really tries to support the trainers community, as it is the guide for trainers on how to forward this knowledge on open science. And it's a resource from the community for the community. And at this point, I would like uh, to hand over to my colleague, Edith. Thank you, Helena. And if you don't mind, I will keep my camera uh, shut for the, for the talk part because it's on my laptop and it's really uncomfortable. But I will be back visible uh, for the question and answer session if it's okay. So um, I will be uh, short, briefly talking about the uh, experience uh, participating in the book sprint and about the Burton handbook uh, itself. So no, not there. Here, sorry. Uh, so the. Um, the book sprint was basically uh, a, ba a really good, effective method of content production, and uh, it was uh, really successfully uh, organized and implemented by Foster in February. Um, it was the main uh, objective was to create a training handbook on open science issues, and uh, uh, it was meant to be a resource to promote open science. And uh, it uh, was an addition to the training trainers production, as Helena already mentioned before. So the decision was made to provide a place and resources uh, um, and bring together uh, trainers or open science advocates uh, who have been already involved in open science practicing and uh, activities beforehand to share their knowledge uh, in this uh, format. And uh, it, it, uh, it was an interactive uh, experience, and it, it actually continues to be an interactive uh, experience uh, since it's a live book, it's a living book. Everybody can, uh, can still uh, contribute uh, to the process uh, and to the uh, content itself. Uh, already, there are some translations um, in place. It's finished, and uh, there are some actually in the process, so it uh, truly will be an international uh, product, open science product. So, the, about the content, uh, a little bit. Uh, the, med, the major part of the book is uh, about the open science basics, 
um, the main concepts and definitions uh, are being uh, discussed and described. Um, the main issues that are relevant to the current scholarly communication. So there, there are chapters on um, research data, on policies, on um, software and open source uh, codes, um, on uh, peer review and uh, licensing as well. Uh, and these, uh, these different uh, issues, and there are um, really um, important uh, sections on open access advocacy and open science advocacy on collaborative platforms and also citizen science as well. So and all these issues are being examined uh, in the book from different uh, uh, aspects and uh, all um, um, the main concepts are uh, analyzed through why is it important? What is it basically? How would you do, how we define it? Uh, what are the main learning objectives that we would like to uh, to be used in, in trainings in relation to these concepts? Uh, what are the key comp components of these issues and concepts? Um, and there are links and further resources listed uh, on each of these uh, basic concepts. This is the this is a massive. Uh, information or uh, content part. Uh, so it is actually um, designed to be modular so everybody can pick and choose uh, the sections that uh, they would like to use in, uh, in future trainings or workshops. Um, th this is basically the theoretical part of the book and uh, there are, there's a practical side of the handbook uh, where we provide advice, guidance on how to organize uh, open science training events. And um, uh, we uh, talk about how the workshop uh, should be organized, what are the main issues that the organizers should uh, pay attention to, you know, about the audiences, um, about the different uh, learning and the teaching strategies, uh, um, what are those um, organizational issues when you are organizing an event uh, to train um, that you need to pay attention about the venue, the catering, about the, the social media uh, presence, uh, how to register people and after that how to receive feedback and, and develop uh, uh, your workshop for future uh, use. Um, um, and besides the, 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 the training uh, aspect or the practical implication, there are uh, really good uh, examples in the, uh, in the handbook which uh, give you even more uh, detailed uh, description and, and, and really good ideas uh, what to use, what kind of tools to use in your uh, trainings. There are uh, uh, exercises and uh, for different kinds of uh, um, uh, events. So we give uh, examples and and uh, and ideas for one or two hour sessions, or even uh, for a bigger event which can last up to like four or five days as well. So um, it's really versatile. The handbook uh, can. Uh, uh, give ideas to trainers uh, um, or advoca uh, advocacy uh, events um, for a variety of different uh, settings. Um, one of the, the example was um, in the book was an open science cafe which was um, organized by Foster and uh, actually uh, on this link you can uh, read about a really detailed description of that uh, uh, event which was organized in Athens last year uh, on the Open Science Fair and uh, some feedbacks and uh, how actually uh, it was conducted. And about the experience itself, so not just about the, the book, um, yeah, it was a really intense basically team building <laughs> experience um, where uh, in five days you brought together these 14 people from a variety of different disciplines and a variety of different uh, experiences with open science. Uh, and these uh, 
different uh, uh, ideas and, and experiences are brought together to, to uh, create a group and uh, and actually not just to uh, become a, a team but also to produce something uh, in five days which will be later used by uh, others as well so it was a really intense uh, uh, five days and um, the first day uh, actually the, any kind of team building uh, should start to to define a clear common goal for the team to achieve which was really well uh, communicated on the first day but it was really flexible how we would like to achieve it. So the, the, the goal was set to produce this book in five days, but how we go about this, it was up to for these four team participants. So um, the first day was actually uh, was spent uh, on arriving on a consensus, how to structure our knowledge, how to share our knowledge with, uh, through this uh, handbook, and so we decided on the chapters, how to organize the, the content. So, and it was a really, uh, uh, really interesting uh, uh, process of brainstorming how we actually, uh, within a couple of hours, we had to come up with a structure for this whole uh, uh, handbook. The organizers really, uh, Helena and uh, Lambert, really made our <laughs> life easier by uh, helping to us to get to know each other really quickly through exercises and uh, and um, little games and um, as the mood was set so called then it was really uh, easy to uh, get into the mode of produ producing and um, the the reason it was actually working in this case really well uh, for all for the whole period of time that uh, this team actually um, uh, was really well uh, set or well developed uh, on the first day. So all these requirements for a good teamwork was uh, basically was provided. So the members uh, dependent on each other on one way or another. Um, we believe that our, each of our opinion was important uh, and um, uh, each of us had a role uh, because uh, uh, assignment was given um, and chapters were, uh, were given as a responsibility for each of us and um, we were really comfortable in sharing ideas, asking questions from each other if we ever stuck or we were, uh, was not, we were not sure how to, to proceed on with our uh, thoughts or or the, the even the content uh, how to structure it so it was a really um, um, it, a productive environment in this uh, way and that's why it actually it worked as a collaborative uh, collaboration as a really uh, uh, open science <laughs> uh, experience so, um, so. Um, uh, Helena and Lambert actually wrote a blog post which was recently published on how to organize such events um, uh, like a book sprint uh, and they shared their experience uh, how to select the participants, how to uh, pool the resources together, what kind of uh, tools you need to motivate uh, the, the group and uh, what to do with, with the product itself uh, in the long run. So I think it's a really um, yeah, good uh, read about the whole experience from, from the organization you know, perspective. Thank you. Annie? Um. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Helen, okay. Sarah just wrote that she needs to be host again, but you, you have already done that. Yes, thank you.
Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. I'm so sorry. Having troubles getting connected. Or better, staying connected. Um, yeah, so I switch on my webcam once again. Okay, first of all, thank you so much, Edith and Helen, uh, for your presentations. Um, yeah. Oh, sorry. Okay. It's a bit too loud. Um, so I guess, yeah, we will now open the floor for the Q&A round and if there are any questions from the audience, you can write that down in the chat area and I'm going to read them out loud. Okay, maybe while there are people writing, oh, this first one from Henrike. And she's asking, do you know how many scholars have participated in your training workshops by now? Um, I, yes, I know that, but I, I don't have the exact number right now. So let me just look that up. <laughs> mm. Okay, there are more questions to come. Okay, maybe we can um, switch to the second question from Tamara and she's asking what about preparing the authors of the book sprint, for example, regarding reference management and reading? Yes. Actually, let me answer that we received a, a list of books or references that uh, was advised to go through and, um, and, and to, to get familiar with. Um, but um, most of these uh, participants who were selected in this case were all um, well endowed in uh, open science um, readings and, and activities. So they had uh, the main, um, the main uh, challenge was actually to, to get consensus on how to structure our knowledge, basically, because uh, uh, all of us were, um, in the past couple of years, were really uh, exp um, get experience with open science in one way or another. And it, it was up to us, the first day was actually uh, to, to decide what kind of, uh, um, not just the structure, but what kind of platforms we are using, uh, what kind of writing and tools yes, we are using. And yes, before the book sprint, share, we, we um, only provided um, writing like an itself, author guide kind of uh, for preparing and, um, uh, and all the authors, because uh, we uh, so. thought that some people might feel unprepared but um yeah actually it was um very open it was just like giving suggestions and like uh defining the objective and um yeah then as it said everything was uh decided on the first day um and actually i found the number so for the first um project uh phase we had more than 6300 uh, scholars that um participated in our trainings 
And um, of course, because the project is still running, we don't have the exact numbers for this uh, phase, but we also have um, around, um, I think, between um, 3,000 and 4,000 participants in like since 2017. But this is all together like in the webinars we offer and in the training events. Okay, wow. Um, the third question comes from Valentina and she's asking or she's curious about um, the team of authors and their background. Are the authors primarily scientists, librarians? As a trainer in good scientific practice, I was wondering if research integrity concerns are also considered. Thanks a lot for the insights into the project I really wasn't aware of till now. Um, yes, so I think Edith probably can also say something about that, but uh, I can say um, that we had around 40 applications uh, for the book sprint and um, we had like a quite difficult selection process because we really tried to consider to have a very diverse team like people with different scientific backgrounds but also people with um, different exper uh, expertise so um, they shouldn't all be uh, experts in peer review but also in open education and uh, open access and like to have a good team and um, yes I think um, like one or two were are working in the library and like um, Many of them are scientists or working in open science projects. Um, Edith, do you want to add something on that? And it was the geographical diversity was considered as well, which was really nice that um, not just uh, not just uh, disciplinary um, and uh, ex and ex uh, background and background in yeah, really and about diverse the, um, experiences with uh, research with integrity part. So there is not like a separate chapter on research the, integrity, the, the, the but um, as open yes. science is a lot about research integrity, um, it's like it comes up in the chapters several times. Mm -hmm. Okay, are there more questions from the audience? You can take your time. Um, in the meantime, maybe I can ask a question as well. I was wondering uh, what was it like uh, to conduct the prainer, uh, trainer boot camp? Hel Helena, you mentioned it before. And I was wondering how how do you prepare for a boot camp like that and how does it look like uh, in practice? Mm -hmm. Maybe you can give some insights on that. Yeah, so um, one of the resources um, was the Open Science Training Handbook. So, um, yeah, they they got them, like the book, book boot camp was after the book sprint, so they though it was already finished and they had it as resource to prepare and um, what we did during the boot camp we were around uh, 30 participants um, and the first day we um, covered all topics about open science so um, so that we have like um, people that are people are on the same level of knowledge and then on the second day we had actually some people like some speakers who have been written, who had who had written the handbook. So um, Bianca Kramer and Jerome Bosnan and Pedro Fernandez, who are like very experienced open science trainers, and um, they they conducted the workshop on the second day. So um, and it was really very practical. So to for example see the methods in action, not to only to think about how to give training but also to feel how it is like to uh, get trained and then um, like like the last day was uh, very practical again so the um, so the group the participants um, 
prepared their own mini workshops. So um, they applied what they've learned and um, had like very, sh like they were teamed up in groups of two or three people and um, uh, gave like a mini workshop. And so um, it was also the chance there to exchange ideas and give feedback to them and um, learn from each other. Uh, I think Sarah's gone again. Um, and what, for example, what we um, did there, we repeated the boot camp now in Riga, but um, that one was shorter. And so um, what you can, of course, do is to um, let people come with already the knowledge about all the open science topics. Um, so. So, Sarah should be back now. Um, and maybe as, as long as there is no other question, I could also maybe say that um, we are um, like working a, a little bit more about the translation. So, for example, um, the Portuguese version was already pre pre-released uh, a few weeks ago and they are working on finalizing it and um, the Spanish version um, will be released in December so and we are also working on a Greek version and uh, some other um, people also um, express the interest in translating the handbook but these are the ones who are like uh, are really um, are almost done and in progress. Okay. Can you hear me now? I'm, I'm back. I'm so sorry. Um, so Henrique is typing again. So um, maybe for the audience, if you have more questions uh, afterwards, you, you are um, very welcome to write us if you want um, to know more about other stuff concerning open science um, and uh, I don't know maybe we can also ask a question so to the audience so have you um, uh, like have you ever experienced or like um, got some open science training like formally in the university or um, uh, maybe attended some training workshops um, so yeah that would be interesting for us and also, for example, if you would be interested in um, giving training or if that is something yeah, you wouldn't consider for you. So you can maybe type in the chat, but also I think there is uh, the option to uh, set the status. So um, on the upper menu, on the... On on the top menu. So um, maybe people who have received uh, open science training can maybe set their status on agree. It would be interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, for the questions from Henrike again, are you planning to expand the book for different sub-disciplines? For example, as a historian, I'm sometimes encountering questions or problems that are not part of such mm. broader handbooks. And, oh, and thank you for looking up the numbers. <laughs> this is really thank impressive. Um, well, about the handbook, so... I, I can really understand that because in Foster, um, for example, we have also um, uh, like we have these discipline specific partners to increase the um, yeah the training for discipline specific or disciplinary communities because it's quite difficult. I can really I really get that. Um, but for the handbook. It's not really like it's not in the in our scope for the project. The project ends uh, in April, so um, 
but as Edith mentioned, uh, it's a living handbook and it's a li licensed with a CC0 license. So um, we are like we are really happy to receive uh, discipline-specific examples or uh, discipline-specific support that we can add. And for example, this is also what we um, try to um, do with the translations that if they are, for example, are a regional approaches or com um, initiatives, projects you should know of, um, know about when you're practicing open science, uh, they can be added. And um, so if you have some good uh, training for your discipline, uh, please um, send them to us. If I can add more, uh, that uh, we, we will try to discuss these main open science uh, concepts in an overarching way, so which actually would could be applied to different disciplines. Uh, and there's a and this why it's really good. Uh, it's modular, so it can uh, actually you can just pick and choose which is relevant to your more more relevant to your uh, disciplinary practices. And uh, the, even the access and the practical uh, part of the book um, provides a wide variety of uh, exercise types and, uh, and uh, event uh, formats uh, which actually can be uh, applied to different. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank both of you. Um, Martina mentioned that she participated in an open science workshop in Vienna 2017. Um, there's a link to that. And Tamara has another question. Um, do you offer do you offer become an open institution training? Oh, that's quite an interesting question. What do you think could you adapt your ideas to the space of um, open institutions for researchers and non-researchers, professional staff? Um, well, we don't offer that, <laughs> um, but it's uh, like it's a very interesting idea and. Um, I think um, like the courses, for example, the online courses, they are not only relevant to um, uh, researchers, but also to other professional staff. And um, so, of course, you can apply uh, those open approaches, for example, like open source uh, workflows, like tools for that. You can also, also apply them in just like an institutional context. Um, but is but is but this is maybe something I also can take back an idea for to become an open institution. Um, and what I maybe uh, can say is that we are at the moment also looking um, what to do with the new open science training courses. So uh, in what context we can apply them. So for example, if um, uh, institutions, universities can use them for their training and um, yeah, I think that maybe also also relates a bit to the second question. Mm. So the question is um, that it would be interesting to integrate the open science topic in workshops for good scientific practice for doctoral candidates. And uh, I, I absolutely agree. Um, and for example, um, um, in at the University of Göttingen, uh, in the field of psychology and the psycholo psychological department, they, for example, already integrated into um, integrate open science topics in um, bachelor and master um, courses. And um, but we really aim, for example, with the like with the toolkit, that um, it can be reused by institution. And for example, it's very easy to. Um, uh, use and training for doctoral candidates. 
So you can, for example, download them all in uh, SCORM, which is like a, um, a format to use, like to um, integrate our course in your own learning management system. And if you have like very specific ideas, so mm -hmm. um, you can really reach out to us, uh, send us an email, and um, you can, if you want to use our courses in your context, can help you there. Are there further questions from the audience? Or examples for any other workshop courses concerning open science that you have participated in. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think Sarah has problems again with her internet. I think you should be able to speak again now. <clears throat> I'm back again. So, um, Xenia has another point. Um, and she wrote the Open Science Center at the University of Munich has some resources both about open science tools and materials for workshops. Yes. Okay. That's also a good resource. <clears throat> We are yeah. also in uh, close contact with uh, Felix Schönbrot from the LMU. He was, for example, also in one of our workshops this summer. Eden and I organized. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that's quite interesting. So, Okay, so if there aren't more questions for Helena or Edith, um, yeah, I think we're, we had good questions and um, yeah, quite a good discussion as well. And so I would like um, yeah, to thank you all for attending our webinar on open science training approaches. And we hope yeah, you enjoyed it. Unfortunately, um, I had to reconnect a few times. But if you have furthermore questions um, that were, um, wasn't answered during the event, yeah. We are happy to take your questions um, concerning this webinar within the next two days or in the next days. 
So, and furthermore, you will receive the recording of the webinar as well, and maybe the presentation slides as well, I think. And yeah, for the feedback to this webinar, we, you will receive a feedback sheet in the next couple of hours to give you, to give us your impressions on the webinar. And yeah, we would appreciate your support by giving us your feedback. So thanks a lot in advance. And yeah, take care and have a good day. Thanks. Bye. Bye.